All right, I have read your comments and so many of you have asked how I make roti. You guys might pronounce it roti, R-O-T-I. Most countries have their version of a flatbread. The Pakistani version is called roti. It's two ingredients. It's not typical for, uh, in a Pakistani household, for the boy to learn really young, um, which I know is that okay, but that's just the way the culture is. But my mom taught me when I was really young. So uh, I started learning when I was about seven or eight. And then by 13, I could make these for the family. When you get Indian food from a takeaway or a restaurant, Instead of buying the, the bread there, if you've got access to this at home, do it at home. It's so much better, I promise. It takes next to no time. I've got my atta that's already made, which is basically our version of saying dough. Just think of any Pakistani store, any Indian store that has spices, you should, you should be able to get this. It's super common. I take the atta that I've already prepped. So it's like a thin dough. So I'll take about this much, small palm, and I'll roll it up. So I've taken dry atta, which is here. I just leave it on the side of my rolling board. And to make sure it doesn't stick to your hands, you just pop it in there. Boop, 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 boop. It's actually really hard to make a round roti. So this is the cheat. So I flatten it in my hands. So one thumb stays in place, the other one kind of pulls it. And so I create kind of a round shape even before I ever roll. My mum thinks that it's the, the, the cheat, but I don't care. As long as it's round, who cares? Then I've got a flat uh, piece of what looks like a really thick roti. I dip it in my flour. I wanna get rid of most of the excess. And then I wanna make sure my, my board is relatively well coated. You do not wanna have a lot of atta, dry atta on your roti. So don't use too much. Make sure your temperature of your pan is on. You want to make sure that it's hot by the time you put it on. This is called a tava, which is T-H-A-V-A, tava. You can use a regular flat pan, you don't have to use this, but I love this, this is non-stick. And so I keep this on medium heat. As soon as I start to make my roti, I put this on, make sure it's warm. So once I've got that, I'm just gonna use my rolling pin. I'm gonna take it easy. We're going very, very lightly, we're not pushing down. Here's a, here's a little tip for you or a little behind the scenes for you. This is an old time, like an old uh, worldy thing. But when a woman is trying to get married, her mom will teach her how to make roti because this is like a staple of any Pakistani household diet. And um, they try and teach their daughters how to make this as round as physically possible. It can take a really long time to perfect like months and months and months, if not years, to get it perfectly round. But with this hack, you can learn how to do a round roti relatively quickly. It's one of my favorite things to make. It just makes me feel like I'm connected to my Pakistani roots and it reminds me of my family and my mom making this. Like it brings me so much joy making this. I try and make this most days when I'm at home. My husband Rob has learned how to make it as well so we make it together. I'll do this part and he'll do the next part which I'll show you, which is actually really cute. The reason why I do this, I, I play with it through my hands, is because I start to feel the heavier points. So I go around just the edges to make sure nothing is too thick because you want it to cook evenly. My heat is on, on under the dava. I'm turning it high. You want it to be as high as possible. So just take it on one side, drop it. And this is your last chance to make it completely round and flat. The quicker you cook it, the less dry it's gonna be. You'll see some sections are this color, some sections are still the raw dough. Get as much of it to be this color as possible and then flip it. We're gonna do this side. Then I spin it just to keep it really even. You want it up to be on this side for maybe 20 seconds or so until you start to see the lightest little bubbles form, which you can start to see they're forming the tiniest, tiniest little bubbles. You flip it one last time. Finally, you'll see the bigger bubbles form. I take this, my turner, and this, which is what we call a sake for a sakey in my family. The reason we use this is it's got holes in it. This is gonna allow the fire to get through. I add my roti to that, and the goal is to get it to puff up slightly and to make sure it cooks evenly. I only use the seiki every now and then. I will often take it off the seiki. You see this, it's starting to bubble up a lot. That's the point you want to get it to. And then you turn it, and then you spin it more on the seiki. And then just get the edges to make sure they're cooked. And there it is, it's done. A perfectly round roti. Let's go eat a starabun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson on how to make roti. Um, if you have any comments or questions, just ask them below, but it's so simple. You can't possibly have any questions. Just uh, tell me what you think of it. Like it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and, uh, and enjoy the other videos that I've got coming. They're gonna be so good.